Coming up in today's video, I'm going to be spending a day in Changchun, a city in China's northeast where I eat and do only new things. Most notably, I'm going to be trying to drive in China for the first time ever. Mm -mm. Honk. Honk? Yeah. To my first honk in China. I've been coming back and forth to Changchun for about a year now. So for anyone who's new to my channel, the reason I'm coming here so much is my boyfriend lives and works here. So I try to spend as much time here with him as I can. But the thing is about spending an extended time in one city is you get comfortable, you form habits, you know your favorite places, and you go there over and over and over again. But today is all about breaking out of those habits because today I'm on a mission to do only new things for a day. Eat new things, do new things, go to new places. It's going to be a really, really fun day. But before we get into the fun stuff, I want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, which is the Insta360 Go 3. I mean, here's a close up if you can't actually see the camera because it is just that tiny. I mean, check out how small it is. It's also magnetic, which means you can mount it on any magnetic surface, which is so, so handy. It gives you the flexibility to just snap this onto any magnetic surface. Right now, I've got it on a street pole and you can vlog yourself. Super steady tripod just here. So the accessories for the Go 3 are also magnetic. You've got the hat mount here. You've also got this pendant, which is really cool. You can put it under your shirt and stick the camera on like so and literally forget you're even wearing it because it's just so small and out of the way, which in my opinion makes it so perfect for getting point of view shots, which really can make the audience feel like they're a part of the action as you wander around, eat your food, have conversations with people. It's a really amazing tool for vloggers like myself. But when it comes to vlogging, I can't not mention the action pod here. It's a new feature of the Go 3. Basically, you stick the camera in like so, also magnetic, and not only does this charge the camera, and it can also function as a remote for the camera, but it also features a flip up screen. So you can actually see yourself as you're vlogging. So you know exactly what you're capturing. Vlogging mode activated. But never fear, if you're worried about getting everything into frame, there's also a mode on this camera called free frame mode where you can actually reframe it to vertical or horizontal after the fact, a really nice feature. So today I'm gonna to be exploring Changchun with the help of this little camera. Let's snap it on as we head towards our first stop of the day, which is our morning coffee, but not as you know it. Hey, you're good. Yes, you did hear me correctly. Starbucks currently has a special menu item of tomato rosemary flavored coffee. Do you have to buy Man, Starbucks in China is really something else. So this has definitely got to be the wackiest coffee flavor I have ever come across. And that is saying something because I've even made series on my channel with my friend Elise where we go to Starbucks during their like, you know, Chinese New Year or different like promotional periods and try the flavors that they come up with. But rosemary, tomato, coffee, I mean, how is this even going to taste? How did this idea even come up with? And does Starbucks try to have any more new ideas that they could possibly come up with? So, you know, in the spirit of trying new things and getting out of our comfort zones, today I won't start off my day with a, you know, oat milk latte. I'll start it off with a tomato rosemary latte. <laughs> Let's try. It's very strange. Whoa, very strange. Because the first flavor that hits you is the tomato and then you get the coffee and then in the aftertaste you get the rosemary so it's lo many layers of flavor I don't hate it will I order it again probably not but will I finish this definitely yes well on that note let's get ourselves to breakfast and of course it's gonna be a new place a new food that I've never tried before hey, the boss here was also kind enough to allow me into the back kitchen so I could see for myself how this jianfen is made. So first step is frying cubes of sweet potato starch until they're puffy and crunchy on the outside, at which point they're transferred to a bowl. It's then topped with some MSG, soy sauce, oyster sauce, a decent amount of this thick, luscious sesame sauce, and then finally some mashed garlic as well as coriander. It's then filled with hot water, so it becomes like a soup. And there you have it, Jilin City's famous jianfen. They're so sweet here. They're all from Jilin City, uh, which used to be the capital of this province. It's now Chongchun, but they've all come here to start a business and uh, serve us some very, very authentic jianfen. Oh, 谢谢, this is 
On a completely unrelated note, I am totally loving the colour of these plates and bowls. And these two dishes in front of me, they are just so fragrant. I'm getting such a garlicky like fragrance from this one here. And this one is just like super like oniony and meaty as well. I feel like this is gonna be a very flavorful breakfast. So I'm gonna go in first with um, some of this uh, Jemfen. I'm gonna mix it up first, cause that's what he told me to do. I'm very curious as to the texture of those cubes. I'm gonna go in for a spoonful with a couple of those cubes, some soup. Mm. It's very garlicky and sesame. The cubes aren't as crispy as I thought they would be, but they definitely carry like a slight oily taste because they've been fried. It's funny, it kind of reminds me of a hot, salty, garlicky bingfen because <laughs> the cubes are really soft. But he also recommended that I can add a little bit of chili. So let's see what that tastes like. Mm, that's even better. It adds an extra zinginess and kind of balances out the garlicky saltiness in this dish. It's really nice. I like it. Let's try this shall be. Apparently it's filled with beef and onion. Mm. Crispy on the outside. Very meaty, very savory. And you guys know me by now, of course we're gonna dip it. Mm. I can confirm, very good for dipping as well. One thing's for sure, I'm definitely coming back here in winter because I feel like on a winter's day, having a shaobing with this dianfen would just be so comforting and warming. That was such a satisfying breakfast. I feel so good right now. Uh, so yeah, trying new things, always a good idea. And we're gonna continue on with that trend. We are about to do something that I've never done before in Changchun, which is uh, actually take the metro. Yes, I only found out this morning that Changchun actually has a metro, let alone have I ever been on it before. So uh, that's our next adventure for the day, taking the metro. Okay, here we are. Changchun Metro, Jiafang Overpass Station. Let's see what this is like. You know, as far as metro stations go, it's pretty standard to what you would find in the big cities. Also, for anyone interested, Changchun has about like five or six lines. The line I'm taking today, the green line, it's actually an above ground line. Big moment, guys. First time on the Changchun Metro. Well, I guess this is more like a train, an overground train, but still. Big yeah, give me a honk. Okay, we are on the train and I think the train driver must have thought that I was like a train enthusiast or something because he gave me a few honks, which I do really appreciate. That was really nice and got the heart beating. Anyway, we are on the train. It's a very nice train, very new feeling, very clean. A lot of signs telling you what you can and can't do. You've got your, you know, your, your standard ones here, like, you know, no smoking, watch your hand, keep clear of the door. But there are also some other ones over there, like no lying down, no rollerblading, no urinating. All good suggestions. Um, probably the reason why this metro is just so clean. Anyway, we are not just on the metro to come on the metro. There's actually a destination in mind. We are going somewhere that's actually one of Changchun's top tourist destinations, one of like the biggest features of Changchun, but I've actually never been there before. Um, it takes about 50 minutes to get there on the metro. We'll be there, I guess, in 50 minutes. Oh, by the way, this we're passing now is the Yitong River. Delk and I come here all the time for a walk or a bike ride. It's the main river that passes directly through the city of Changchun. Hey. We have arrived at our destination. So we've just arrived at Tinyuan Metro Station, the Moon Lake Metro Station. And this is one of those places that when everyone first arrived in Chongchun, everyone like their first weekend was going to. But Delk and I never really did that. I mean, our first weekend in Chongchun was also the first weekend seeing each other in two and a half years. Needless to say, we had other priorities. Okay, we are going in. I have my tickets. The first one here is the uh, entrance ticket. And this one, I have a ticket for the cableway and also the Toboggan. Seems that we are just in time for the water show. <laughs> what an entrance. <laughs> so the first thing you need to know about this place is it's massive. The path around it is a total of 23 kilometers. So to get around, unless you're really, really fit, you're gonna need to take one of these public shuttles, which go about every five minutes or so. And they stop at various little stops around the lake where you can get out and explore. So I've got my first glimpse at the lake. And the very impressive thing about this lake is it's entirely man-made. Construction on the lake began in 1934, and as I mentioned, it's completely man-made. Not just the lake itself, but the entire forest around it. All of the trees around it were all planted by Changchun locals. So this park here is actually really, really meaningful to Changchun people, because generations and generations of Changchun locals have come here to plant trees. 
So I am getting the full experience of this park. I paid a little bit extra on my entrance ticket to get access to the cableway and the toboggan. So you get the cableway up and then the toboggan down. I'm currently on the cableway as we speak. You can see here, it's one of those kind of like you sit in it and your legs kind of hang off the bottom type of thing. Good thing it's not too high. Uh, because historically I am not the best with super super high cableways. <laughs> Don't even make me think about my experience at Zhang Jiajie. There's not so much to do at the top. You basically just get off the cableway, then directly start lining up to get the toboggan back down again. I did read in a sign here that claimed that this is actually the world's longest toboggan. Not sure if that's true or not, but if it is, man, Changchun, that's a nice flex. This is really the longest toboggan in the world, right? Uh, it should be China. It should be China, okay. Okay, we're on it, guys. And you heard her, longest in China. Still very impressive. Let's see how long this actually is. Oh, it's so fun! Yeah! This park is so green. There is just so much green. So I've been waiting for over an hour to get on this, I have to say. So far, so good, except for this guy who is inevitably gonna go super, super slow in front of me. Ah, yeah, what am I? Oh dear, this is gonna be a long ride. And yes, he went at a snail's pace for the entire journey. I honestly could have walked faster. That's the end. We made it to the end of this cableway. So here are my completely honest thoughts on this moon lake. Very big, very beautiful, very impressive that it's all man-made and like I love how special it must be to people at Changchun. But oh my gosh, there's a lot of waiting involved. I mean, first you've got to wait to get on one of those cars to get you to the scenes and you really need to get on a car because it is really, really big. And then waiting for the cable car, that was an hour and a half. Waiting for the toboggan, that was another hour and a half. So I've been in this park for a total of like four hours and I feel like I really haven't seen anything. So if you come here, I probably suggest don't go on the cable car or the toboggan. It's not really worth your time. Um, I suggest just having a walk around or get a bike or something like that because it's really nice to have a bit of nature, but the, the waiting just, just gets me. Speaking of waiting, time to get back on the metro for another hour or so. By the time I got back home, Delk was already back from work. Hello. 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 Okay. What's good? So, I'm making a video right now. Yes. So the situation is, I'm trying only new things today. Uh-huh. And uh, I got my driver's license last week, as you know. I know. So what say we go for my first drive? You sure? I'm ready. Uh, yeah, are you cool. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So a little bit of a, of a back, um, some back information. I'm very, very nervous about doing this for several reasons. Two main reasons. Firstly, the drivers in Changchun can be a little bit aggressive, a bit fast and a bit speedy. <laughs> um, the second reason I'm feeling a little bit nervous is in Australia, we drive on the other side of the road, on the other side of the car. So it's a lot of new for me. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit nervous about this. All good. Should I get the car out? out yeah. Of the garage? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And let's get the go three set up here to capture this special moment. Okay, let's do this. This already feels very, very strange because I'm getting in the wrong side of the vehicle, in my opinion. After a fair amount of seat adjustments, I was ready to go. How do I turn on this car? It's an it's electric already, car. It's already it's on. on. Yeah, it's already Far on. out, how do I reverse it? It's very different from any other car I've driven before. It's super high tech. Oh, there are people. <laughs> It's hard because I go to put the put the gear change on this side. Yeah, no stress. Just wait for them to be gone. And then in this kind of car, the the indicator is on the other side. Can I go out here? Yeah. Yes, you can. Oh, look at this! I'm driving. Next one left. Next one left. Oh gosh! Now I'm getting into like bigger traffic. It's the left one. Oh fuck! Windscreen wipers. Okay. And you want to go left? Go left here. Yo, we are driving. Or. Oh. You are. I'm driving. <laughs> you are driving. I can't believe it. After 10 years in China, driving for the first time, and so far it's been okay. It's mostly just in a straight line, and I'm just getting used to slowly but surely driving on the other side of the road, on the other side of the car. Mm -hmm. There was some aggressive driving, but you know, that's their problem, not mine. Where should we go on our next road trip? To, uh... Maybe we can let the subscribers Sanya. decide. <laughs> Sanya. Where do you think we should go? On our next road trip, where's good around here to road trip to? Jilin. Jilin City. Jilin City. Yeah, also good. I had a dish from Jilin City today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really, really good. It was, um, you know what, you can just watch the video when it comes out. Uh, this is very good. You're doing a good job. Thank you. This is a very and, uh, nice car to drive, honestly. It's very smooth. Very smooth. And I was not paid to say that. Hoopen. Honk. Honk? Yeah. To my first honk in China. 
someone. Yeah, like you would. That was my first one. On, I don't think on I've honestly street. ever used it even in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> You, here it's essential, you need it. We have arrived in one piece, which I'm very happy about, and uh, we are on our way to our dinner stop. Um, so it's actually something I've been wanting to try for a really, really long time, um, and it's actually Xinjiang Tom Yifen, like spicy, uh, rice noodles in a, like a Xinjiang style. So there's a restaurant here that has really good reviews, so we're gonna go there and give it a go. I hear these are very, very spicy. Let's give it a go for the first time ever. Very spicy, yeah? Very spicy. Apparently, oh, wow. it's like the, some of, one of the spiciest noodles you can get in China. I guess that's the one all the way on the left. That's, that's the one that's that we're going to get. Getting, huh? It looks quite spicy, huh? Mm. And you can choose between not spicy, a little spicy, less spicy, medium spicy, and extra spicy. Guess which one I've gone for. Extra? Yeah. <laughs> Anything you like the look of over there? What is this? Oh, it's a kobaldze. Like a kobaldze. Get one? What is it? It's a, inside there's meat. It's kind of like a meat pie. Okay, yeah, that's right. It's really that's good. Right. Oh, oh my goodness, look at what has just arrived. Look how big that is. I mean, can you hold that up to your head? Yes. For a comparison Very size? <laughs> head size. How's it smell? Good, but also spicy. I love how thick those noodles look. Me too. <laughs> you first. Mm. Mm. Nice texture in the noodle. So how are you feeling about the spice level? <laughs> I don't feel it. I feel a little bit, but it's definitely still edible. It's not that kind of like blow the top of your head off kind of spice. I, maybe it's one of those things, the more you eat, the more it'll like hit you. Other than spicy spices, this ultra thick sauce is rich in other spices too. It's a total whack bang dish full of flavor. Whack bang. By the way, you know what I'm gonna do when the bread is here? Oh, put it on the bread? Dip it in. Oh, I've taught you so well. Anyway, here's our plate of breads. We've got the kalbalds on top there, and underneath we also have a serving of kanang. It's like a barbecued bread. Nice and crispy. Let's see. Some. Oh, yeah. mm. I like the herbs on it. It smells and tastes like. Mm. They actually did it on a grill. Yeah. Like not in an oven, like in a grill where they put the coal inside. Yeah. Very nice flavor. Is it good when you dip it inside? Yeah, because I think if you eat it like just like that, it's a bit too dry. So I want to do it a little bit differently. I just want to try the bread by itself. Mm. It's got the same flavor that you'd find on like um, Chinese barbecue. Yeah. The cumin-y, herby. You got so much like salts and stuff like that on top. It's really flavorful. Mm. But I really want you to try this kobalza. I love these. They are so good. It's basically, they put it in this pot and they stick it to the side and then inside it's got this meat and it's just so amazing. I'm gonna open it up here. It's super like meaty and oniony inside. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Very good. Delk and I have unanimously agreed we will definitely be coming back here again. So that brings me to the end of my day of no. trying new things in Chongchun. Not for me. I'm still enjoying this bowl. Well, I'm going to let him finish this bowl while I do the wrap-up to this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And thank you so much to the sponsor of this video, the Insta360 Go 3. I have really enjoyed using this camera today and a lot of the shots that I got, I feel like I wouldn't have been able to capture as I did if I was just using my my normal vlogging camera. Got some really good angles and yeah, if you're interested in learning more about it, buying one for yourself, you can visit the link in my description. I'm getting one. Are you? Yeah, for our next uh, holiday. Okay. It's so convenient. Like, it it's is, very right? small, you can clip it to pretty much anything. Can you also attach it to a, a surfboard? Yes, you can. Yeah. It's is also it waterproof. waterproof. Wow. Really? Yeah. yeah. We're going to the Philippines yeah. in, a, in about oh. a month or so. If you're from the Philippines, I'd absolutely love if you could let me know in the comments below, what do you think I should eat there? So yeah, that's it from us. Thank you so much for watching this video and a friendly reminder to everyone out there to try new things. You never know where it might take you. Literally, if I hadn't have driven here, we wouldn't be eating this delicious bowl of noodles. <laughs> so, anyway, that'll be it from us. I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.